All right, this is the 7th uh, grade TCAP practice test, math section. Question number 49. What does the slope of this line represent? Uh, now, the nice thing is they're only asking about the slope. And if you've watched any of the other videos, you know that slope represents change. So what they really want to know is what represents the change, or what the change represents as it goes left to right. Now, the issue is I have to understand the axis labels first. I've got on the x-axis time, or in hours and on the y-axis I've got dollars. So I'm really looking at dollars and hours. Now the issue is with slope, I need to figure out which one goes on top and which one goes on the bottom. You might remember that slope is represented by the letter M. Now mathematical historians aren't really sure why that is. Some people think it's because it meant modulus of slope and the other thinks it's be, and other groups seem to think it's because it's in the middle of the alphabet whereas like A and B and those sorts of letters are at the beginning and usually in math represent numbers and then X, Y, and Z represent the axis. They just picked a number, in, a letter in the middle. Who knows? Could be anything. Anyway, when I think of M, I think of Mario, of the Super Mario Brothers. Now, in the old versions, I'm kind of old school, a little bit 80s in a way, um, you had to go upstairs at the end of each level and you jumped and there's like a little flag. Now when you move with Mario if you kept going forward before you went up you just slam into the box over and over and over again. Now if you remember to go up before you go over Mario could land and go up each step. So I remember that Mario needs to go up before he goes over. And the nice thing is it also works for slope. If you go down, your slope is negative. But in this case, we're going up, so we're in good shape. So I need to make a ratio or a fraction or whatever or a statement where I put what goes up on top and what goes over on the bottom. Now in this case, when I go up, I'm talking about dollars. When I go over, I'm talking about hours. So I'm going to look for a statement that sort of mimics what I've written on the board. A says the number of dollars raised per hour. And, you know, that seems reasonable because it has dollars on top and hours on the bottom. And that word per here generally is indicative of the idea that I'm going to make this kind of statement. Uh, B says the number of hours per dollar. That doesn't really make much sense here because dollars has to be on top. So we're going to mark this out. C says the number of dollars raised after eight hours. Now this is a big warning sign. We talked about the slope having to be about change. And I don't mean like coins and things, not quarters. Change. If I'm locking it in at eight hours, it can't represent change. So I can't limit myself with a number here. So C is out because it's limiting me and slope is like change and not limited. Don't hold me down. And D says the number of hours needed to raise $750. Once again, I'm locked into this numeric value of 750, so slope can't be hindered by numbers, so that's out. So my answer to number 49 is the number of dollars raised per hour, which I can get from the fact that Mario has to go up before he goes over, and because slope, of course, represents change.